Okay, on my way. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, Warning. What you are about to hear is truly shocking, disturbing, and in some cases simply evil. If you are easily offended, please do not watch this video. So before we begin, I just want to point out that I'll be leaving timestamps within the video just in case you've come across a call you've already heard on a separate channel. Also, be sure to hit that like button. If we can get 5,000 likes on this video within its first 28 days, I'll drop Volume 7 in the coming weeks. Stay creepy, ladies and gentlemen. I'll catch you on the next one. Number 5 On March 1st, 2008, a man by the name of Tommy Gaston dials 911 and states to dispatchers that a nearby neighbor is on his property and that he has sustained a gunshot wound and that the house across the street was also on fire. The circumstances surrounding this call would unravel a shocking triple homicide. Have a listen. 911, what's the address of your emergency? This is Tommy Gaston. I've got a man that's been shot out here at my house. Okay, so he's been shot? Yes. What's your address? Uh, 2320, wait a minute, uh, hang on. It's uh, 2063, County Road 2320, 2370. County, are you on line? Yes, ma'am. Can you confirm address? Uh, it's, it's okay. 2063, Rains County Road 2370 on 911. Right. Okay. Is this an Emory? Uh, well, yes, it's Rains County. That's uh, Alba address. 2063, Rains County Road 2370. Okay, so you're in Alba. Saturday, March 1st, 2008, the small town of Alba, Texas, was shocked by a triple homicide scorned by forbidden love, which in turn would be the motive for this brutal and senseless act of violence. Erin Caffey, age 16, her boyfriend, Charlie Wilkinson, age 19, and two friends, Bobby Gale Johnson and Charles Allen Wade, plotted to kill Erin Caffey's parents because they didn't approve of her boyfriend, Charlie Wilkinson. According to reports, Erin Caffey and Bobby Gill Johnson 
waited in a car down the street on that quiet Saturday morning. Meanwhile, Wilkinson and Wade went on a stabbing and shooting rampage within the home before setting the house on fire. Sadly, Penny Caffey, age 37, and her sons Matthew and Tyler, ages 13 and 8, unfortunately died in the attack. Terry Caffey, Aaron's father, who was shot five times but managed to escape from the burning home and then retreated to his neighbor's property. Terry fortunately survived this heinous act of violence and testified in court that he recognized Wilkinson shooting him and his wife while they slept in their bed. All four defendants were charged with three counts of capital murder to which they all pleaded guilty to avoid the death penalty. Bobby Gail Johnson was named as an accomplice who did not use a weapon and she received 40 years in prison, parole eligible after serving 20 years. Aaron Caffey, Charlie Wilkinson, and Charles Wade each received life in prison without the possibility of parole. Number 4 On January 21, 2013, a Las Vegas police officer by the name of Hans Walters contacts 911 and calmly states to dispatchers that he has just shot and killed his wife of 22 years and their 5-year-old son. He states within the call that he has set the house on fire and that he has plans to commit suicide after reporting the call to the dispatcher. Have a listen. 911, what's the address of your emergency? Hi, 1313 Esther Drive, Boulder City, Nevada. Okay, and what's the problem? Tell me exactly what happened. Uh, my name is Hans Walters. Mm -hmm. uh, I work for Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Uh, I just shot and killed my son, Max, and my wife, Michelle, and I killed her because she's in such chronic pain from her neck and back and on more medicines and she's not going to survive. And we were both seeing a therapist and a psychologist in Boulder City. His name is Jay Summers, and uh, I feel terrible for doing it. Okay, and okay, you... Okay, out. Please don't, please don't interrupt me, please. Okay. Uh, I, I've also set the house on fire, and if the fire department comes to my house, because there's a fire hydrant right in front of my house, uh, I'm going to open fire on them. So I have to wait till the house is burning, and then I'm going to shoot myself, okay? So okay, I don't, sir. I don't ask me any questions. This is, this is real. This isn't a joke. The fire alarm's in the background is because I set the garage and the bedroom on fire. My wife's in the bedroom. I shot her in the head. My son, unfortunately, is in the living room watching Oswald, and I shot him in the head, too. And, uh, oh, forgive me for my sins. Please don't call back. Thank you. When police arrived on scene, the house was set on fire, as Walters was standing in the doorway of the house while holding a firearm. According to statements, Walters was uncooperative with police and then went back into the house to which he took his own life. As the fire department put out the blaze, officers finally entered the home. That's where they located three bodies in the rubble. The identification of the three individuals were that of Hans Walters, Michelle Walters, and sadly, the couple's five-year-old son. Number 3 on March 23, 2013, a man by the name of Tracy Scott calls 911 and admitted to shooting his wife to death within their home. Have a listen. 911, what's the address of your emergency? 455 Eastern Aaron South. Repeat the address for verification. 455 Eastern Aaron South, Salem, Utah. Salem? Yep. Okay, that's what I'm showing. What's the problem? Tell me exactly what's happened. There's been a shooting. Okay, who was shot? My wife was shot. Was it self-inflicted? No. Nope. Who shot her? I did. Do you still have the weapon? Yes, I do. Is she awake? No, she's dead. What is your name? Tracy. What's your last name? Scott. Where's the gun right now? In my hand. 
Can you put it down? I don't know yet. What kind of gun is it? It's a 45. Is it a handgun? Yes. Okay, Tracy, can you put that down for me? Let I, me get I, some help to you. Yet. I don't know yet. Okay? How can I, you... I had two children that I just totally destroyed their lives. They're okay. not here. Uh, is there anyone else at the house with you? No. Nope. Okay, did you guys get in a fight or what happened? We've been fighting for the last two weeks, so I was really straight. Okay, where did you did shoot you her at? In the bedroom. She got off the phone with her mother complaining about me, telling me how she's tired of it and this and that. And Tracy, what part of her body did you shoot her? I don't remember. Can you go in and see if she she's conscious? She was going to take, no, take a picture of me, and I, and I just, it just went off. Okay, Tracy, can, we, can I have you go in there and see if she's conscious? See if we can help her, okay? Can you do that for me? No, she's dead. She's not moving. Can you go over there by her? No. How old is she? 38. 37. And you, you are sure she's beyond any help? Yes. Okay, swatch so here. Tracy, stay on the phone with me for a second, okay? What's your phone number? Tell them not to come in. I have to make a phone call. Tracy, can you... When police arrived on scene, Tracy Scott came out of his home and complied with officers. Scott put up his hands, knelt down, and was arrested on scene without incident. Inside the home, police discovered the body of Teresa Scott, aged 45, sitting upright in her bed, her crochet still in her lap. Teresa had been shot three times, with a fatal round striking her chest. Tracy Scott was sentenced to 15 years to life for first-degree murder. Number 2 On September 18, 2014, a man by the name of Donald Spirit dialed 911 and stated to dispatchers that he had shot and killed his six grandchildren and his daughter within the home and that he planned on turning the gun on himself once law enforcement arrived on scene. Have a listen. Gilchrist County 911, what's the address of the emergency? Yes, ma'am, I, I, um, I just shot my daughter and shot all my grandkids, and I'll be sitting on my step, and when you sit here, I'm going to shoot myself. What is the address that you're at, sir? 2550 Northwest, 25 Paris, downstairs. They're, they're, every one of them are dead. Uh, you said your name is Don Spirit? Yep. All right, Don, what kind of gun do you have? It doesn't matter what kind of gun I got, they're all dead, and then when you get here, I'll shoot myself, and then you figure out what kind of gun it is. And how long did this happen, Don? I, I, I don't want to hear it, man. I'm done with all every fucking thing. Just bring the motherfuckers out here, that's all. You got all the kids are dead in the house. Okay, how many people? Okay, how many people? Six kids, one adult. Six kids and one adult? Yeah. One of them is a baby. All right, Don, is there any way you can stay on the phone with me until I get somebody there to help you? What's that? Can I ha have you stay on the phone with me? No, I, no, I'm not that. I'm waiting for them to get here. When they get here, I'm going to shoot myself on my back set. All I'm doing is waiting for them. Are you sitting on your back steps? Yep. Okay, Don. Um... When officers arrived on scene, verbal contact was made with Donald's spirit. After a brief verbal exchange, the suspect sustained a self-inflicting gunshot wound, which resulted in his death. According to autopsy reports, all unfortunate deaths within the home were the results of gunshot wounds from a 45 caliber handgun. Sadly, there was no survivors from this senseless act of violence. Number 1 In September of 2008, 
A woman frantically dials 911 and states to dispatchers that a man broke into her home and assaulted her and her husband with various weapons, including a gun, hatchet, and a metal pipe for nearly 45 minutes before the couple finally fought back and stabbed the intruder multiple times. Have a listen. Here, tell me 911. We're being robbed. I've got a guy by a knife. What are you telling me? We're all bleeding. West Point Trail? West Fork. Fork. O-R-K. Firefighter Ron Huddleston. Firefighter Ron Huddleston's house. And it's a robbery in progress? We have got the guy down. I have stabbed him several times. Hurry up. Somebody call your mess, please. Okay, you said... No subject on this floor. You've stabbed him several times. Yes, get to the mouth here. We have somebody in route. Just down the front. I need you to answer some questions for me. Oh, God. I'll stab his ass. Ma'am, you better get somebody We have people in route. I just need to get some more information from you, ma'am. What's your name? Jill Huddleston. Okay, is he white, black, or Hispanic? Hispanic. Get over here. How about how old is he? We have people in route, ma'am. I promise we have people in route. I just need to get some more information. Who all is there with you? My husband. My mom. I don't think there's another assailant. He told us there was. I don't know. Do you have any children in the house? No, ma'am. I do not. Okay. How was entry made? Huh? How was entry made? How did he get in? I have the two door. He's the one. Hurry, ma'am. We're all bleeding. Have you been? Have you been stabbed? Mom, stay there. Ma'am, have you been stabbed? Mom! Go to your room! Close the door! Do you still have the knife in your hand? Yes, ma'am. I told this son of a bitch, I'll kill him. Do you know who he is? No, ma'am. Okay, so he's unknown to you. He has beat us with a metal post. A metal pipe. Ma'am, we got blood everywhere. I know, I know. We have people in route. We have we have three deputies in route, and EMS is also in route. You say he beat both of you and your husband with the metal pole? Yes, ma'am. My husband's bleeding bad and may have a broken arm. I was hit three or four times in the head with the pipe. Okay. Is he unconscious? The, the guy that broke in, is he unconscious? What? Is he unconscious? No, ma'am. We're just holding him down. What does your house look like? Huh? What does your house look like? It's a brick house with shrubbery in front. The fire department, my husband works for Eagle Mountain Fire Department in Fort Worth. They know this house. Okay. Tell JW if he's on. It's Ron Huddleston. Please, 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 God, hurry. We have people in law. I just need to stay on the phone with you. Your husband's holding him down. What? Your husband's holding him down. Yeah. You're going to die. What's going to happen? Yeah. Why did you do this? Why did you do this to us? Yeah, baby. Great. What is he saying? He's got AIDS. He just told us. He has AIDS. And we're all covered in blood. Don't move, mister. Don't just, move. Yeah, just don't, don't try to injure him any further. Leave them. Just try and keep him. But, yeah, don't use any more weapons. Do you, do you still have the knife on you, ma'am? What? Do you still have the knife on you? I have a knife. My husband's got the pipe now. You better get here. This guy ain't going to be alive much longer. Ma'am, um, hang on. We have people coming. Let go of the pipe, mister. I'm going to cover the blood. Are they pulled? No. Oh, wait, now we should care how you feel. Yes, okay. Did he tell you his name? No. Okay. Don't touch nothing. Put your hands down. Put him down. Ma'am, somebody better be here for you. I know, ma'am. We have three deputies in route. They're in route to you. Just Where's the fire department? Um, I don't, I don't know. We don't dispatch to the fire department. We have them on the way, though. What? They've been notified. They're on the way. Okay. How, do, how about how old does he look? Forty-five or fifty. Came to our bedroom door. It looks like. Came to your bedroom door. Is that where you came in? Son of a bitch. 
Just so you'll die. I know you don't give a shit. You go straight in the heart. Do you have any cars in your driveway? I do. What? Do you have any cars in your driveway? And are, are they like you four squad spawn or anything? Ma'am, I don't know. Okay. No. No, because now you're going to... Suffer in jail. Oh, Did he say why he broke in? What, ma'am? Did he say why he broke in? Hell, he wanted us money. Just wanted money? First for a goddamn living, and he comes in here trying to steal our goddamn money. We had a whole $50 piece like that. Shut up. No. They're going to jail. And you said there was a second suspect, or he didn't? No. My mom's fine. He kept telling us they had somebody in there with her. Okay. Come on, man. Ron, stay there. Stay there. I ain't killing you. No. How do you think you just made that steal? My sanctuary is my goddamn house. How did you pick us? Cal, how did you pick us? No. Come on, man. Where is he? Where are they at now? Ma'am. Yeah. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Huh? I'm here. I don't hear any sounds yet. Please, ma'am. No. No. That will be fine for you. Because you know why? My husband and I are Christians. Obviously, you didn't give a shit. Where are they, man? I don't mean to They're coming up. Uh, they're almost, they're almost to Boat Club. Jesus. What part of Boat Club? Oh, they're on Boat Club, almost to Park. They're almost passing Park right now. Where are you in them? The, we have three of them in route. We just... Ma'am, could you please get to our department? Yeah, we have the MS in route. We have the MS in route. I haven't heard it tone. Mister, settle down. Ron. She still got him held down on the ground. Where are y'all at in the house? Huh? Where are y'all at in the house? We're in the main living room. Is there is the door unlocked so the deputies can come in? The deputy is unlocked. The front door is unlocked. Okay. No, I ain't killing you. No. I tell you, good night. I hope I cut the son of a bitches off. That's what you get for kicking your feet up at me. Run. Is, so, is the knife yours, ma'am? What? Is the knife yours? Is it your knife? Ma'am, I have it in my hand. I know, but did he break in with it, or is it? No, he has a gun with him. He has a gun on him? Yes, ma'am. Not now he doesn't. Where's the gun at? Son of a bitch wasn't even goddamn loaded. He had to a goddamn pipe 50 times on our heads. I don't really get it. Okay. Is there someone in the house? I got it. Okay. And you said it's not loaded at all? I don't know. You don't know? I grabbed it. I was going to shoot his ass, but it clicked. He goes, the son of a bitch ain't loaded, and I don't know enough about that. You better be goddamn glad. They wasn't loaded like a fucking like a fucking head. They're coming up Belt Club pretty quick right now. I don't understand this, ma'am. Hey, what part of it? We don't mess with him. We don't mess with nobody. We beat ourselves. I don't know why he picked us. According to reports, the incident began around 9.30 p.m. when the suspect, Heredio Ibera, entered the home through the garage and began demanding money from the couple. Ibera then struck Ronald Huddleston several times, breaking his left arm in the process. When the intruder struck Jill Huddleston, the couple began to fight back, which in turn resulted in the eventual death of Heredio Ibera as the two stabbed Ibera with a knife. No charges were laid against the Huddlestons.